water is really one of the hardest things you can do in CG animation, I think, because as you, everyone knows how it looks. Depending on what angle you shoot the water at and what light situation you have, water looks different in every frame. The color of the water changes drastically from when you look at look at it from the top or when you look at a flat at it from a flat angle. Daniel Clark, our production designer, did an amazing job taking Axel Scheffler's uh, illustrations from the books and taking those a step further and building those worlds and um, expanding on them and really helped us achieve that sense of scale. So Max started the, the boards while we were still working on Zog. And then Dan Clark came in and based on the storyboards that Max and Christian did, very quickly did a whole bunch of concept art, looking at Axel's drawings, looking at um, sort of references that Max found for the different environments and the different kinds of characters. So he did a, a pass uh, at, at the characters, a pass at the color keys, and some sort of key environments. And, and so uh, the pre-production came together very, very quickly. So now on the whale, we chose to go with a more naturalistic approach um, when working with the water. We just felt that using a more um, real-world scale made more sense for, for this film. We ran into a few issues where we'd have all the ingredients we needed to make up realistic looking water, but for some reason, you know, it just wouldn't look right. And we couldn't quite pinpoint exactly what it was. We couldn't verbalize what that thing was that was making it look wrong. We overcame that by marrying each shot to a piece of reference that we had found, often from a nature documentary about the ocean or about whales. So we knew exactly how the two interacted and behaved uh, alongside one another. There was some talk about trying to do you know, is there like an, an animation version of water or a stylized version of water that would make everyone's life simpler? But we, we always came back to the idea that because it's a story about a big character and, and, and a, a small character's relationship, the water really needs to sell the fact that snail is small, whale is big, and it has to behave like that. If the, if the water started to feel too cute and too kind of um, oversized, then whale might feel quite small, and then it kind of defeats the purpose of the message. So from a creative point of view, we knew it was important to, to, that the water support the story and support the feeling of those, those characters uh, being out at sea. There were a couple of interesting challenges. For example, what does the whale look like above and below water? How do we make him look a bit wet when he's above water? How do we make him look less wet when he's under the water, funnily enough? the tail of the whale. If you look at whales and you look at sharks or any fish, when they're under the water, they actually look quite velvety almost. They have this, this kind of um, uh, matte, you know, sort of, I wouldn't say spongy, but they have a very different sort of feel to their skin. So it was trying to, trying to find, find all those sort of cues uh, to how to tell the audience, oh, this is where we are and this is what's happening. 